This is the McKenzie Inn, situated beside the McKenzie River in Shunya Township, 22 minutes east of Thunder Bay, Ontario, on the new Lakeshore Drive. This massive structure has been host of many travelers and locals over the years. Built in the early 1900s, after the first was deconstructed, the new McKenzie Inn is four times the size of the old building. A great atmosphere and lodgings have drawn many over the years, but not just the living. In July of 2017, General Manager Angie Marshall contacted Dark History in an exclusive first-time access by any paragroup to investigate claims of paranormal activity on the premises. The events of that night and subsequent investigations have culminated into an episode featuring the most visual captures and the highest frequency of anomalous sightings in a single location. So this spot here, this is actually where the original Mackenzie Inn was. They had found uh, like a native burial ground just up there. At this door, at about four in the morning, they would actually hear these doors opening. But they are hearing phantom sounds as if the piano is playing. If there's anybody around down here, or you can move something. So there are, you know, some unfortunate disasters that is happening around here. Who holds my camera? It's 405. 405. Okay guys, so this is Kyle. Uh, he's gonna be helping me out tonight on tonight's investigation. Now Kyle's pretty new to this, but uh, he'll definitely be helping in getting all the extra footage. We could break up into uh, two cameras, trying to get as much shot as possible in eight hours. So at this door, what, I was, what was told to me it was at about four in the morning. They would actually hear these doors opening it was loud enough that the people upstairs would have to come down, have a look, they check it, impossibility to come in. And these things were always slid up. But what they heard at the time was these things ratcheting down really fast, so loud that it would wake them up upstairs. So that's what happens here. We'll go over to the stairwell. On these steps here, also they'd hear roughly about the same time, about four in the morning, you'd actually hear them opening the door, the main entrance, then they'd come through here, they'd hear all kinds of footsteps slamming up the stairway. So I don't know, we might either place a recorder right here on the steps to capture that, or maybe on the piano, I'll show the piano next. Okay, so this is the original piano um, from 1940, or the 1940s. Uh, what happens here is that no one's actually witnessed, you know, the keys being pressed, but they are hearing phantom sounds as if the piano is playing. Uh, I asked if it was actually playing a song, not really playing a song, but notes. They'd hear things like that. So that's what's going on with this. All right, back in 2011, when I was here, um, I'm not sure exactly where they kept their glasses, but that's what they said, that the glasses would come sliding off the shelves. So that was another thing. This one here leads down to the basement. And we're gonna end up going down there see if we could find uh, Jimmy's sisters. Uh, Cause they all ran the uh, Mackenzie Inn. Um, they say that uh, Agnes and Mary are down here and there's a third sister who they can't remember the names but that's who they say is down here. This main floor is basically covered by Jimmy. Okay, so what's behind door number five? 
Door number five is called the Silver. In here is where the story goes that people have heard footsteps. Even recently they've heard footsteps, so we're definitely gonna have to check this room out tonight. What is it? August 1st today. Yeah, definitely. Boiling hot recently. All right, watch your foot, watch your step here. So this spot here, this is actually where the original Mackenzie Inn was. Uh, I guess this part burned down or it somehow caved in or something. Whatever happened, it was deconstructed and they ended up building this section and then they actually started building all the way down. So what we're standing on right now is the original Mackenzie Inn. So we're just walking the perimeter of the building reason why is because we'd like to get you know gauge the size of it this freaking huge like it goes all the way along the back here all the way down this is a huge building which is why i brought kyle with me to help out but i just can't do the whole thing by myself not this building and plus because i'm awesome and plus because kyle's awesome <laughs> i think it was around 2006, 2007, they're beginning construction on the highway up here. And uh, during that time, they had found uh, like a native burial ground just up there. So maybe that is contributing to the forces that are here. We don't know. It's a good possibility. Uh, apologies to the family, uh, but I, I should mention the name. Um, during the construction of the highway, there was a person on a crew working on, I believe it was a scissor lift, down in the gorge, just over there beyond Mackenzie, at the Mackenzie River. And they were working on the highway up here and somehow the scissor lift ended up falling into the gorge and it killed him. His name was Gustavo Argueta. So there are, you know, some unfortunate disasters that has happened around here. So here we are in the Mackenzie basement. Um, we've uh, taken a quick walk through just to get the uh, layout of the property. And uh, this is where actually where we're starting our investigation. Uh, a lot of people get creeped out down here. Um, let's see, like a lot of the staff won't come down. And uh, they fear there's uh, two spirits down here that it's uh, Agnes and Mary. So we're gonna be calling them out. They were uh, some previous owners of the building. So what's gonna happen, um, I got Kyle with me. We're gonna end up splitting up. There's an old, old fridge from the 30s or something. We're gonna end up splitting up, uh, taking two sections of the basement, and we'll see what we can catch down here. That should be it. All right, I'll go find a spot. All right, this is D's cam. I'm gonna go in this room here, there's a door. So that I can find the... I'm gonna go in this little room. See if I can catch anything. So right now it's like pitch black down here. Hopefully my IR doesn't start acting up. Hello, is there anyone down here? you're down here and would like to communicate you can all you have to do is make a noise move something off the shelf behind me if there's anybody around down here if you could make your presence known to me somehow let me see you or move something
Is there anybody? Hey, okay, right now? This is a pretty noisy spot, so you want to make the presence in a little louder. Agnes, are you here? Is there anything you would like to say about the Mackenzie? During our time in the basement, we had asked many questions regarding uh, who was down there, Jimmy, Agnes, Mary, or the third sister. Also, we had asked questions as to whether the uh, burial ground had any effect on the Mackenzie itself, but we had absolutely no response. Is there anybody here that would like to communicate? We spent about an hour in the basement, and during that time we did not catch any EVPs at all. The contributing factors to this were the electric hums of the compressors and pumps in the background. At this point, I had went into a small room where they had deconstructed the wall. My IR is constantly acting up, but during that time, if you watch on the bottom left hand corner, you'll see a shadow shift by. And during my time in that room, if you look on the right-hand side during the malfunction, you'll see something pass by. I'm not exactly sure what that is, if it was a hair or fiber from insulation, or possibly something forming as it passed by me. Or a tip when you're doing paranormal investigations. When you're reviewing your footage, um, usually the happenings are pretty quick, within two to three frames of footage, so you really gotta keep your eye open. You just never know. Are you talking to me? Oh, I just talking to the camera. Oh, okay. Seems kind of dead down here. Yeah, I'm not really getting them. All right, we're gonna head up to uh, the next floor and uh, see if we can catch anything or at the top floor. Either or. Okay. All right. We wanted to gain access into the silver where the footsteps were heard, but the person staying there took the key with them as they were out of town. So we decided to go into the Mackenzie. However, no matter how many times we tried, we could not enter that room. Something doesn't want us in there. I think they've mislabeled the keys. Okay. Can't get into the Mackenzie. Then there's this other room that we wanted to get into. I can't remember. Okay, it was room number five. Had the feet shuffling across the floor. Was it silver? The silver, we can't get into the silver. So right now we're into the Ishka Bibble room. And we'll see if we can get anything to manifest in here. What we would really like to hear is some footsteps in this room. Can you do this for us? So I just lost battery power on here, we're at 83%, but it does happen, ghost hunters, it does happen. Uh, I've noticed it with a few Sony cameras. Your battery you would say it's pretty close to full power or even at half and it just drops dead. It does happen. So we gotta continue uh, in the Ishka Bibble room uh, with Kyle's camera again with the uh, LED light on. So we'll see what we can catch in here. Hopefully we can get something. We may not hear your voice if uh, you do try to speak due to the refrigerator there because of the electric hum. But we can definitely hear if you decide to speak with us to give us a knock. Or to even try and touch. You can touch one of us. You can ruffle the bed sheets. We'd really like to hear your footsteps come along the floor here.
Okay, this room seems pretty dead and I gotta recharge my camera. So we'll uh, find a different spot to shoot, okay? Okay, we're just leaving the Ishka Bibble room and we're heading down this direction to come downstairs. We heard like a snapping noise. I'm not sure which, which side it came from, but we'll take a look anyway. You know, it sounded like someone snapped their fingers up here or something. At least that's what I heard. I thought I heard a voice. Really? Well, that's what they say too about uh, frequency of ghost voices. It actually uh, creates a sonic boom in the air and it creates like a small sonic boom, which is like that. So I may have heard that, but you heard the actual voice. Mm -hmm. And then they'd hear footsteps coming up these stairs. Almost, what they told me was, it was almost like a party was going on. The Shining, right? <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that could really be anything else. Yeah, there's nothing else that you could really attribute it to other than something actually, Brilliant. something paranormal happening. Mm -hmm. There's no way people can get through those doors without breaking them. I'm going to put down a recorder right here. Just let that go. You would probably kill it and switch batteries and... Um, you know, recharge and do whatever you gotta do. Cutting. Kyle set up a camera trap inside the lobby facing the piano. So we went outside and during that time, about eight minutes later, we caught what seems to be an orb flying past. As the orb flies past, you'll see it has no distinguishing features like that of an insect, wings, or anything of the sort. So we'll let you be the judge. If you look to the left hand side of the screen, you'll see something pass by. I believe this to be a spirit capture. Also, if you look at the pool table, you see a black shadowy figure pop up and then drop back down on a sight. Now taking this one, and I'm actually going to go put it in the uh, on the stairwell. See if we catch anything. We left another camera trap this time at the bar to catch uh, anything happening in Jimmy's work area, and we captured what looks like a reddish-colored orb flying past. But if it's an insect, we'll let you be the judge of that. The methods Dark History uses are SRC, EVP recording, and video. SRC stands for Spirit Radio Communication. It has proven itself time and time again on many investigations. SRC uses precognitive word stacking, much like the ghost box, but requires no cleaning of audio. Oftentimes when using this method, you get hints that come through. Other times, full-on responses. Voices come across as both male and female, but it's important to remember it's what's being said that counts. Where do you like to hang out, Agnes? If you'll recall the story of the three spirits in the basement, here's that clip once again. But it just reinforces the fact that there is somebody down there. They fear there's uh, two spirits down here. That it's uh, Agnes and Mary. So we're going to be calling them out. Where do you like to hang out, Agnes? Are you still working here to this day? During the SRC session, we do come across the name Marjorie. 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 We don't know if this is the name of the third sister or if it's a variation of Mary. Also during the SRC session, we captured this. A 
the isolated audio came from the Zoom recorder placed on the stairway. At this point, we looked at Angie, and she was completely freaked. We just heard like a huge crash and bang, almost as if there was a door opening and closing. At this point, this is where I realized that was the sound of a door slamming. What time is it? Is it four? Where the hell's my camera? It is 4.05. 4.05. Okay. You heard that. I heard something too. I heard that. You heard that. Oops, sorry. Um, like someone just came in. I hope it picked it up on audio. I know the radio was, uh... Oh, it's locked. Yeah, that's locked. Do you want to ask it if someone came in? Yeah, okay. Who just came through these doors just now? During the SRC session, we caught an extremely loud slam echo through the main floor. I brushed this off completely because I thought it was Angie, but it turns out Angie was right behind us. Joan, I hate her. That's what I heard is Joan, I hate her. What's in the fridge right now? I just heard something else. Oh, I thought that was you making that noise. Hello? Are you making noise in here? So while we were just doing that last session, there was another bang back here. I'm gonna turn this flashlight out. And we're gonna go IR. So I'd like you to show yourself, please. Okay. All right. Angie says the basement door is a little bit open, so we're going to have to go check that direction. During the SRC session, I asked Agnes where she likes to hang out, and we got the word basement. This reinforces the idea that Agnes has the ability to open and close doors at will and then suddenly slip down into the basement. As I look at the door, it was about a quarter inch open. That is a weighted door which closes. But I push it and see if it closes itself. Yeah. Closes itself. All right, we need someone to stay up here. We'll get Angie to stay up here. Let us know if anything else happens. And we'll just take a quick uh, look in the basement here. After finding the door was open, we head down into the basement looking for any evidence of spirit activity. Yeah, that's what I instant thought, but... Pay special attention to the back wall in this room. I believe we caught a half-torso apparition manifesting as we passed by. If you'll recall, Kyle entered that room earlier. There is nothing in there to give a heavy white reflection on that back wall. Or a tip when you're doing paranormal investigations. When you're reviewing your footage, um, usually the happenings are pretty quick, within two to three frames of footage, so you really gotta keep your eye open. It's D outside of room 13, the Coral. This is where I'm going to be staying for two nights, three days, doing a special investigation of the Mackenzie Inn. So this is going to be really cool. And I'm going to go walk around. I'm going to check the basement. Watch what happens in this clip. The anomaly seems to pop up from the darkness, soar past and fade into nothing another shaped like an insect or an orb. This may be the same type thing found in the deconstructed room in the prior investigation. 
communicate with me tonight. Mary, Agnes, Jimmy, if you want, um, you can touch me, poke me, uh, whatever you want to get my attention, if you need my attention. I am here to speak to you. It would be really great if uh, you could do one of these things or move something off one of these shelves or make a tap or a knock or a big bang. That'd be great. What the f It's like something was grabbing my necklace, seriously. I have got the chills. My hair is standing on end. Hello? Someone down here with me? I'm looking for like cobwebs or anything. Whoa, did somebody touch me? I'm gonna turn this around. Can you do that again? Can you touch my necklace? You can touch my necklace if you want. Just make sure that it's visible. Okay, so this is uh, Dee and Dennis in the Mackenzie basement. Oh, I've never seen that door closed before. And uh, all right. Uh, Time roughly is it 9:40 something like that? 10:06. 10:06. It's 10:06 p.m. So now it's dark. This is the room I was in last night where I swear something pulled my necklace. Hell, kidney. Eh? All right. So feel free to walk around. Um, Ask whatever questions you want. Here's your here's your volume. Volume up. Does anybody wish to speak? This anomalous ball of light was not visible at the time. I will say it almost has a mechanical motion as it drops down. It may be some type of internal reflection hitting the stabilizer, but there was no direct light nor harsh reflections resembling that shape entering the lens of the camera. Also it reacts completely on its own, contrary to any of the camera's movements. Are there any children here in the Mackenzie? Is there anybody here? At this point, Dennis was busy investigating the east end of the Mackenzie basement, but unfortunately had no AV caps while I was on the west side making my rounds. Do we have any spirits here with the ability to uh, move objects? As you will see, I enter this room in hopes of catching a visual or audio occurrence. Here I decide to put my camera down and try to elicit a response, whether tap, knock, or manifestation. Can you give me like a tap or a knock? Anything to let me know you're here? If anyone's in here, can you um, show up behind me? Dennis. 
Dennis's cam also picks up the knocks. At this point, being about 40 feet from the room I'm in, I end up leaving in no hurry, thinking I would see Dennis outside the room. Slats getting together. It's on tagging that. I thought that was Dennis. So that was interesting. I was in that one room. I thought you were right outside the room. It sounded like uh, two wooden slats being like uh, thrown on the ground. So that's because when I was in there, I was like, oh, that's probably Dennis. Came outside, there's no one there. No, I never passed here. I went this way. Holy. So I was in here and uh, I heard what sounded like a couple of slats, like this stuff here, uh, maybe falling on the ground. Here, I'll, I'll play it back if I, if I can. It's, uh, it was loud. I thought it was, I thought you had walked by and you're standing right here. No. That's like way deliberate. It was so weird. It was like bang, bang. Like one is one thing, two is like. Yeah. You think that came from right here? Yeah, it sounded like right beside the wall where I was standing. So that would be this end of it. During our ghost tour, we captured the following. Do you have a flashlight for a second? I'm coming. Over here? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to pull this off of here to uh, give you an idea of what I heard. I was in this room here. It's an electrical room. So I'm in that room, and I'm like, okay, can you give me a, a tap or a knock? Anything to let me know you're here. And when it happened, instantly, just like in the in the episode, instantly I thought, um, I assumed, like last time, it was Angie that made that loud bump, and it wasn't. Same thing happened in here. I assumed right away, oh, that's Dennis that made that noise. What did I hear? This is what I heard. Uh, this thing I just took off, that thing over there, this was exactly where it was. I heard it right about here. This is what the sound I heard. I was like... Can you make a, a tap or a knock? And I went. Whoa. Like when you were down here. I was down here. And then see, I'm like, what the heck? Oh my God. <laughs> Dennis? <laughs> no, I think that's, oh, that's probably Dennis. But don't you think one is enough, right? Two is deliberate. I walked out of there expecting to see Dennis. Dennis was not here. I bumped into Dennis down by that big room with the, uh, with the, uh, um, weight with these stuff. So I'm very interested. Now we're hearing the sound of what kind of like marbles being dropped in here. Are the kids in here? To do. So in retrospect, given all the anomalous captures and ghostly visuals, along with all the caps from SRC to outright slams, bangs, and raps, do I think Mackenzie Inn is haunted? Yes, I do. There has been a plethora of evidence from the establishment. Are the spirits from all the people over the years inhabiting the building? Maybe. And what of the burial ground story? After 9,000 years, the bones may well have deteriorated in the soil, but the ancient spirits may still be traveling and interacting with guests. What are the owners, Jimmy, Mary, and Agnes? Agnes seems to be quite active with a learned ability to manipulate doors through spiritual energy. Is the inn a terrifying experience? No. There may be the odd slam and creep factor that plays on the mind and body, but I don't think there is anything malevolent in the building. With spirits willingly accommodating the guests and the investigation, it seems they are more happy to meet patrons' needs, much like the current management, who go out of their way for their customers. I am certainly glad to have been a regular guest at the MAC, as each stay has been a blast, and certainly have seen new things here. 
the culmination of evidence has certainly outdone my many years of investigating in only three days. So if you're planning a stay at the Mackenzie Inn, it is haunted.